18. Well, a very good evening and thank you for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Ashmit Kumar and here are the headlines that we're tracking at this hour. Union government moves to apply the polluter pays principle on the automobile industry with a new extended production responsibility policy. Sources say companies could be mandated to recycle their vehicles and reuse components. That's an exclusive. The Enforcement Directorate raids Hero Motor Chairman Pavan Munjal's residence in connection with a money laundering case. Search is also conducted at other premises in Delhi and Gurugram. Hero Motor stock tumbles to the lowest level in a year. Mixed back for Motown in July. Commercial vehicle sales come under pressure while exports continue to hurt. Tractor sales improve. Passenger vehicles, especially SUVs, accelerate. Uber reports first ever operating profit in Q2, largely due to increase in trips and stern cost-cutting measures. Strong guidance lifts the stock. Uber CFO Nelson Chai will resign in January next year. He is the most senior executive to quit since the company went public in 2019. The demand for gold in India is down 7% in April to June quarter. World Gold Council expects demand to decline 10% in 2023, hitting the lowest level in three years. Communal violence in parts of Haryana leave at least five persons dead and more than 30 injured. Curfew imposed in Gurugram and Noom. Schools and colleges remain shut. Mobile internet services have been suspended. Many companies ask employees in Gurugram to work from home. 20 construction workers crushed to death at the Mumbai Nagpur Expressway site in Thane after a crane collapsed. Three people injured and five to six people are feared trapped. Maharashtra government orders a probe. Supreme Court summons Manipur's top police officer to appear in person on Monday, that 7th of August, has slammed the police and called the investigation into ethnic violence in the state lethargic observes that there is complete breakdown of law and order in Manipur. Lok Sabha debate on the no-confidence motion against the government will begin on the 8th of August. The Prime Minister will reply on the 10th. The government tables the Delhi Services Bill in the Lok Sabha amid loud sloganeering. The bill allows the centre to retain control over the Delhi bureaucracy. Myanmar's military rulers pardon Aung San Suu Kyi on five legal charges, but the deposed leader remains saddled with 14 other cases against her. She has been in detention for over the last two years and has been sentenced to more than 30 years in jail. Also on the show, Xiaomi launches a handful of new products under its sub-brand Redmi, which the company thinks will drive the 5G revolution in India going forward. A special report. Coming up. Well, let's start with the market action. Sensex and Nifty end with marginal losses after a range-bound trading session. Uh, bank stocks declined in trade with the Nifty Bank Index losing nearly 60 points. Mid-caps managed to buck the trend and the index ended marginally in the green. Well, India's Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing has softened uh, to a three-month low. However, the sector remains in expansion mode for 25 straight months. The PMI reading for July was 57.7 compared to 57.8 in July. Any reading above 50 denotes expansion in the sector. The rate of expansion in output and new orders was only marginally softer in the month of July compared to the month of June. Well, GST collections came in at 1.65 lakh crore rupees in the month of July, registering an 11% growth year-on-year -year collections. Uh, have crossed the 1.60 lakh crore mark for the fifth time since the tax regime came into existence. Revenues from domestic transactions were 15% higher than July of 2022. Well, India's appetite for gold seems to have taken a hit due to record high prices. The World Gold Council is expecting demand to fall 10% and hit a three-year low this year. 
Now, demand for the April-June quarter in India has also come down 7%. Well, here is an exclusive story. The government is looking to mandate automobile companies to recycle some vehicles sold by them. Sources tell us that the centre is working on a new extended production responsibility uh, policy in an attempt to apply the polluter pays principle on the sector. Parikshit Luthra joins us now with more exclusive details. Parikshit, uh, what is the government planning and how will this impact the auto industry? Well, this is a practice that is followed in several countries abroad and India is studying those examples. And this is in light uh, and also in the context of our Paris uh, Agreement and Paris commitments as well. So what we're learning is that an interministerial group led by the Environment Ministry is studying the possibility of bringing an uh, extended production responsibility policy for vehicle makers across the country, which essentially means that every two-wheeler, uh, every car maker, every commercial vehicle manufacturer will be responsible for the entire value chain from production to recycling of vehicles. There could be mandates given by the government as to what percentage of vehicles will be taken off uh, by, from the roads by a company for compulsory recycling and what percentage of recycled products or material would go into production of new cars in future. So this will have far-reaching impact uh, on the automotive industry. Uh, discussions are on with stakeholders to arrive at a certain formula for deciding how many cars every automaker should uh, recycle itself, what should be the percentage of recycled material being used for production. Uh, so all of the things are being worked out. This is at very initial stages. Only one meeting has taken place, but uh, the government seems to be moving along very seriously in this direction. Right, Pariksha, thanks a lot for that update. And you're right, uh, this will indeed have a sweeping impact on the auto space as and when this policy uh, comes uh, into being. But speaking of the auto space, here's a look at the earnings uh, from the auto space. Escorts uh, Kubota posted strong numbers in the first quarter with revenue rising 15.5%. Uh, margins uh, were up at 14% versus 11.5% year on year. Uh, net profit jumped by a whooping 93% at 283 crores. The company sees a strong improvement in agri-machinery, railway and construction equipment. Well, more action from the auto space. Sales for month of July were a mixed bag. While it was a bumpy ride for commercial vehicles, the tractor segment saw an improvement in sales. Uh, passenger cars saw a strong growth in sales as well. Sonia Shanoi is joining us now with more details. Sonia, uh, Sonia uh, what are the key trends uh, so far? Uh, that the auto sales have revealed as far as the numbers are concerned. Well, thanks a lot for that. So there are four large trends that we've seen in this uh, month's numbers, the auto sales. Let me start with the commercial vehicle space where there's definitely pressure that we're seeing in the sales this time. Both Tata Motors and Aisha Motors have reported a fall in CV sales. Tata Motors CV sales down 4% year on year, while Aisha Motors CV sales down 1.8%. The other big trend I notice is that exports continue to be on the weaker side despite managements like Bajaj Auto saying that things will improve July onwards. So Bajaj Auto reported a steep 18% fall in exports and that led to an overall 10% degrowth in their numbers. Um, in the third trend, I noticed that the tractor segment has seen an improvement. You mentioned Escort's uh, earnings as well. Escort's earnings have been very strong in the quarter gone by. Even for the numbers for the month of July, domestic sales growth came in at almost 10% for Escort's. The management says that retail demand will pick up in the festive month starting September. In fact, even if you pour through their Q1 numbers, there's been a significant jump in the EBITDA performance and very strong top-line growth for escorts as well. M&M2 reported a domestic tractor volume growth of 11% year-on-year. And the fourth trend is that the uh, passenger vehicle segment, especially the SUV segment, has seen a very strong growth. M&M just reported a passenger vehicle growth of 29% year-on-year. And they clocked in the highest ever SUV domestic sales of 36,200 in a single month. Back to you. That's Sonia. Thanks a lot for that. Here's another CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Mahindra and Mahindra's electric vehicle business is likely to get another round of fund infusion. Sources tell us that the fund infusion is expected to come from a large Asian fund and will be completed in the next two weeks. CNBC TV 18 had reached out to the company for a comment on this story and is still awaiting a response. However, in a conversation with CNBC TV 18, the company's managing director and CEO, Anish Shah, said that they are not actively looking for funding for their EV business and that they have sufficient capital at the moment. 
We have never actively looked for funding in our EV business. Mm. Uh, even when BII came in, we had discussions with them at that point on a variety of things across the group. And they were very interested in EV. And we said that uh, we have enough capital, we are generating enough funds in our auto business, so we really don't need it right now. BII has come in with a 25 to 3% stake, and uh, we may look at another 25 to 3% stake uh, at some point in time. Well, the Enforcement Directorate has conducted raids at Hero Motor Corp Chairman Bhavan Munjal's residence. This according to sources who tell us that searches were also conducted at other premises located in Gurugram and New Delhi. Now, Hero Motors shares the cops plunged following the news. Abhimanyu Sharma is joining us now with more details. Abhimanyu, uh, tell us what are you picking up? The Enforcement Directorate has raided the residence of Hero Motor Corp's chairman, Pawan Munjal. The case under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act was registered against Munjal after the ED took cognizance of a case filed by the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence. DRI had earlier caught a close associate of Pawan Munjal with undeclared foreign currency at the Delhi airport. There are several other probes which are also pending against the company. In March 2022, the Income Tax Department had conducted searches at 25 premises linked to Hero Motor Corp as part of a tax evasion probe against the world's largest manufacturer of motorcycles and scooters. In June this year, the Corporate Affairs Ministry had sent a notice to Hero Motor Corp for alleged diversion of funds and shell companies. Right now, Uber has reported its first ever operating profit in the June quarter, driven by solid growth in both of its core businesses. Now this, as the number of rides in the US and Canada surpassed pre-pandemic levels for the first time and demand for delivery stayed strong, despite restaurant reopenings. Now, the company also projected uh, that the growth is likely to continue for the next quarter. Furthermore, the company announced that Chief Financial Officer Nelson Chai will be stepping down in the month of January next year. The performance is there, right? We've got gross bookings over $33 billion, up 18% year on year. Uh, EBITDA record $916 million, up over 50% year on year, free cash flow $1.1 billion, and our first profitable quarter. But I think all of the pieces of the business are going to grow at significant rates in the teens or the 20s. Advertising is going to be the biggest growth area for us because we have a huge audience, over 130 million uh, audience coming at us on a monthly basis onto the platform. Well, oil major BP reported a nearly 70% dip in its second quarter profits. The group's underlying profits uh, for the quarter came in at $2.6 billion versus $8.5 billion year on year, missing Street's expectations by almost $1 billion. However, the company boosted its dividend by 10% and announced more share buybacks. Meanwhile, private lender HSBC reported a solid quarter. The company's net profit more than doubled to $18 billion, its profit before tax rose nearly 150% year-on-year to $21.7 billion. The bank has announced a share buyback worth $2 billion and has approved a second interim dividend of 10%, of 10 cents per share. Well, back home, PVR Inox reported a consolidated net loss of 82 crore rupees, narrowing down sequential, sequentially from 333 crore rupees. The company reported a 14% jump in revenue and 34% jump rise in EBITDA quarter on quarter. Average ticket prices rose nearly 3%, uh, while the average expenditure per head on food and beverages surged by 9% on a sequential basis. The Reserve Bank has said that 88% of 2,000 rupee banknotes have been returned to the banking system since its decision to withdraw the notes from circulation in the month of May. Data collected from major banks indicate that about 87% of the banknotes received was in the form of deposits, while around 13% had been exchanged for other denominations. Communal violence in parts of Haryana has left at least five persons dead and more than 30 injured. A curfew has been imposed in Gurugram and new districts where schools and colleges remain shut. Mobile internet services have been suspended. Many companies have asked employees in Gurugram to work from home. Here's a report by Network 18's team of reporters in the aftermath of those clashes.
गठबंधन और विश्व हिंदू परिषद की शोभा यात्रा निकल रही थी उसी दौरान एक दूसरे समुदाय के लोगों ने उनके ऊपर पत्थरबाजी शुरू कर दी और उसके बाद दोनों समुदाय के बीच जमकर पत्थरबाजी हुई पुलिस जब मौके पर पहुंचती है तो पुलिस पार्टी को भी निशाना बनाया जाता है और आप देख सकते हैं यहाँ पर इस जगह पर तमाम जगहों पर केवल पत्थर ही पत्थर नजर आ रहे हैं कांच के शीशे टूटे पड़े हैं यहाँ पर गोलियों के बुलेट के निशान यहाँ पर आपको देखे जा रहे हैं और कई पुलिसकर्मी जो है इस घटना में घायल हुए हैं मेवात में हुए विवाद के बाद अभी भी स्थिति काफी तनावपूर्ण है और आप ठीक मेरे पीछे देखिए किस तरह से मेवात पुलिस के अलावा अन्य जिलों से भी पुलिस को बुलाया गया है और स्थिति को काबू करने की कोशिश की जा रही है बिल्कुल पुलिस के ठीक उस तरफ सामने जो है उपद्रवी हैं और लगातार फायरिंग कर रहे हैं पुलिस के ऊपर और पुलिस भी अपने बचाव में लगातार फायरिंग कर रही है और कोशिश कर रही है की इनको यहाँ से खरेड़ा जाए I'm currently at at the place at which I'm report, uh, reporting from is in Nu, and this was one of the epicenter of the violence that broke out yesterday. If you could see in the visuals, uh, the manner in which uh, absolutely there is absolute carnage that has broken out over uh, over here since yesterday. People who have been detained, they are being questioned to identify the culprit. Force is deployed at all religious institutions in Gurgaon and nearby areas, particularly areas with higher footfall and those where religious institutions are there. Schools and colleges, uh, seeing the situation, have also been shut at least for today. Social media is being closely monitored, and dedicated teams have been set up to control and to contain rumour mongering. Situation is being under control. Is how can the peace be permanently established? और जो लेफ्ट सेस हैं और जो कहा हम इस सिचुएशन को और बेहतर कर सकते थे और इन घटनाओं की पुनरावृत्ति ना हो उसके लिए पीएचक्यू से स्वयं डीजीपी महोदय इसकी समीक्षा कर रहे हैं और एक एक पहलू की मॉनिटरिंग की जा रही है पुलिस ने और जो केंद्र सरकार की ओर से हमने निवेदन किया था वहां से जो केंद्रीय सुरक्षा बल सोलह कंपनीज वहां पहुंच चुकी है तीस कंपनीज हरियाणा पुलिस की भी वहां पहुंची है इन सब ने नू में स्थिति को सामान्य किया है अभी तक सब मिलाकर चवालीस के आसपास एफआईआर हुई है और सत्तर लोगों के खिलाफ अभी नामजद उनको किया गया है उनको हिरासत में लिया गया है गृह मंत्री कह रहे हैं कि हमने पर्याप्त जो है बल तैनात किया है दूर वही मैं कह रहा हूँ अब पर्याप्त उन्हें भेजा होगा लेकिन पहले जितनी होनी चाहिए थी उतनी नहीं है जो मैंने सुना है Well, parts of Gurugram like Bachapur also experienced violence amid communal clashes in Haryana. A mob of 40 to 50 men allegedly ransacked shops and burnt public property in Bachapur and asked shop owners to shut their establishments to protest the violence in Haryana's new district. As communal clashes continue, many companies located in Gurugram cut short the day for employees today. Companies have also asked their employees to work from home for the next two to three days. Gurugram is home to more than 30,000 companies. It accounts for 70% of economic investments in Haryana. It is the second largest IT hub, third largest financial hub, and one of the largest destination for medical tourism. Gurugram is also the eighth largest city in India in total wealth. Well, on that note, it's time now to slip into a very short break. But up next, Supreme Court summons money for stop police officer to appear in person on Monday, that 7th of August, has slammed the police and called the investigation into ethnic violence in the state lethargic. Details when we come back. MG Cluster Blackstone drive unstoppable Helps beat sensitivity fast Sensodyne rapid relief भरोसेमंद फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज ब्रांड गोल्ड लोन के लिए अभी कॉल करें 1 800 313 
Take care of her, bro. The kilometers you travel don't just measure distance; they measure life. Skoda. Get the biggest business stories of the day, power-packed into 30 minutes, on Business 360 at these times. Go powered by Jana Small Finance Bank. Jama karo, Jana karo. Head start to your trading day. Get ready to profit. Get ready for business with Bajar at this time. I pack my bag. It's all I'll bring. There's space in it for memories and things. Love perfect. Skies, green dragonflies, a thousand miles away. If it shines. I'll Take care of her, bro. The kilometers you travel don't just measure distance; they measure life. Skoda. Welcome back. Here's some disturbing news. At least 20 persons were killed as a train collapsed on a bridge slab at the Mumbai Nagpur Expressway site in Thane. The incident occurred at a village near Shahpur where a third phase of the expressway is being constructed. The Maharashtra government has called for a probe into the matter. Santhya Gora reports from the accident site. Last night a Gorda launching machine collapsed on a bridge at the under construction Samriddhi expressway this highway is going to connect Mumbai to Nagpur the incident took place in Shahapura tehsil of Maharashtra this is the third phase of the expressway uh, team CNBC TV 18 is uh, at the accident site this is the place where it happened now the project is taken care by MSRDC it is MSRDC's project MSRDC informed the media that an investigation uh, has been ordered a group of experts will look into what caused this accident two teams of ndrf reach the location uh, local police and uh, local authorities local fire department teams also uh, reach the spot and the search and rescue operation uh, is being conducted uh, talking about excretia payment uh, state government has announced a compensation of rupees 5 lakh uh, Chief Minister Ekna Shinde has announced that rupees 5 lakhs will be given to uh, the family members of every victim Well let's now shift focus to a tragedy that took place on a Jaipur Mumbai train yesterday a railway protection force constable allegedly shot his senior and three passengers dead with a service gun he was arrested at Mumbai's Meera Road station he was produced in Borivali sessions court today and has been remanded to a railway police custody till August 7th a purported video doing the rounds on social media shows the constable making alleged communal statements we here at CNBC TV 18 cannot vouch for the authenticity of that video The lawyer representing the accused Chetan Singh claims that he is mentally unfit. AI MIM leader and Lok Sabha MP Asauddin Owaisi has called it a terror attack targeted at Muslims. तो एक वीडियो जो वायरल हुआ था उसको लेकर कोई चर्चा हुई नहीं वीडियो के बारे में कोई चर्चा नहीं कोई कोई चर्चा अभी तो पुलिस के बाद उभरे सरकारी वकील से भी पूछा गया सरकारी वकील ने वही बताया कि उसकी मानसिक स्थिति ठीक नहीं है और वो हमने भी उसको पूछा कि आपका इसमें क्या कहा आपने ये क्या किया है कुछ किया तो बोला कि मैंने कुछ नहीं किया तो मैंने भी डिफेंस दिया कि सर वो बोल रहा है कि आरोपी इनोसेंट है और जलती ट्रेन में जो हादसा हुआ इसके बारे में किसी को कुछ मालूम नहीं कोई आई विटनेस उसने आई नहीं 
Well, the Supreme Court has summoned Manipur's top police officer to appear in person on Monday. That's August 7th. Uh, it also, in fact, went ahead to slam the police and call the investigation into ethnic violence in the state lethargic, observing that there has been complete breakdown of law and order in Manipur. In other news, Aditya Birla Group's hospitality arm, Aditya Birla New Age Hospitality, has added four restaurant brands to its portfolio. This after the company acquired a 100% stake in KA Hospitality, a first acquisition made by the group's arm. The company aims to cater to mid and premium segment post the acquisition. At present, Aditya Birla New Age Hospitality operates Jolie's, a members only club in Mumbai. Reliance Industries has signed an agreement with Brookfield Asset Management to explore manufacturing of renewable energy and decarbonisation equipment in Australia. The MOU is aimed at accelerating and de-risking Australia's energy transition. Well, let's now shift focus to the startup space and we have Shruti Mishra joining us now to take us through the key headlines and takeaways from today's action. Shruti, over to you. Well, thanks for that. Let's take a look at the key headlines from the startup space. PayU is selling its global payments organization business for $610 million in an all-cash deal to Rapid, the fintech-as-a-service startup. According to Dutch Investor Process, the deal will enable its fintech arm to focus on the large payments and fintech opportunity in India. Moving on, Baiju's has sent a legal notice to founders of Akash Educational Services following their alleged resistance to complete a share swap that was unconditionally agreed as part of the sale of Akash. Now, the minority shareholders have declined to swap their equity holding in AESL with the firm's parent PTI reports. Fidelity Investments has marked down conversational messaging unicorn Gupshup's valuation to about $700 million. Fidelity has slashed its fair value to a little over $8 million. Now, this is the third valuation markdown by Fidelity in Gupshup. Tech giant Microsoft has appointed Puneet Chandok as Corporate Vice President of Microsoft India and South Asia. Chandok will assume his operational responsibilities from Anand Maheshwari on September 1st. With that, it's back to you. Well, Xiaomi India has launched a slew of new products in India under its sub-brand Redmi. The electronics company has launched its Redmi 12 5G smartphone and Redmi Watch 3 Active. It also unveiled a new TV under the Xiaomi Smart TV X series. I was there at the launch and here I bring to you a look at the new products. Well, I'm coming to you from New Delhi, where Xiaomi has launched five key products as a part of its portfolio. Products that Xiaomi believes will revolutionize their respective segments. But of the five, there's particularly one product that Xiaomi is betting the house on. Well, that one key product is the Redmi 12 5G, and the biggest selling point is the price point. Well, we just witnessed the launch of the Redmi 12 5G. It comes equipped with a powerful processor, a powerful camera, and a large display. But the USP as per Xiaomi is the price point itself coming in with an introductory price of 10999. Betting big, it doesn't get much bigger than this. 65 inches, that's the largest of the televisions in the Xiaomi portfolio. Xiaomi is trying to bring the big back to television, launching four products as a part of its Television X series. The largest of them being 65 inches. It comes equipped with 4K resolution as well as Dolby Audio. And let's not forget the Redmi Watch 3 Active. It's coming in at 2999 and Xiaomi is betting on this watch undercutting the competition. And well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Business. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Keep watching for more news and updates. CNBC TV 18.